gosh, I'm so hungry. Uh, how long before? Flat Earth. Like, probably days. Not, uh... Today we will discuss lava, tectonic plates, and also we're gonna cover Pangea, which is a theory that continents are drifting. No, it's not. Feed Your Mind starts off the video with a truly impressive fuck up. Continental drift is the theory that continents have drifted. Pangea is the name of a proposed supercontinent some 355 million years ago. You get to say swing and a miss. And so we are told that lava is molten rock, which is generated by geothermal energy underneath the earth. And so they call this lava magma. And once this magma works its way up to the surface, it is then considered lava. Scientists claim that this magma works its way up to the Earth's surface through cracks in the Earth. It's a simplified explanation to be sure, but he's not wrong. That'll do. But one thing that we do know that is down below the Earth is lava, water, and oil. And so scientists insist that the reason why it's so hot below the surface of the earth is because of this geothermal energy, which they are saying comes from the original formation of the planet. But since we are not on a planet, we can dismiss that it is hot below the earth because of anything to do with the Big Bang. Just 10 seconds ago, you correctly stated that lava under the earth's surface is called magma. Underneath the earth. And so they call this lava magma. But here, you call it lava. Down below the earth is lava. You couldn't keep your facts straight for 10 seconds. Pathetic. As for your earth's geothermal energy, as you call it, it is not due solely to ambient heat from the earth's formation. Instead, the majority of the heat in the earth is produced via radioactive decay from a variety of elements including thorium and uranium. Another commonly thought producer of the Earth's interior heat is frictional forces caused by the motion of the internal layers of the Earth. The scientists have created these theories in order to justify their conclusions according to what best fits their ideology. And they're allowed to get away with putting this information in textbooks and pass it on as actual scientific fact. I would love to see Feed Your Mind go through the reams and reams of scientific literature on this subject and verify his baseless assertions. But of course, he never will. It's much easier for him to sit on his ass and make these anemic YouTube videos than to actually contribute to the betterment of humanity. According to scientists, there's all types of fractures below the surface of the earth. And so what is causing this massive heat below the earth is the question. Do you think that lava is more something like a furnace? Something like the heating system of the earth? And maybe lava is part of how this building operates to keep it all heated up. Because if this earth does have kind of like a mechanical room or an engine room or something, that would actually kind of explain oil because we even use oil in the engines of our technology here on the surface as it properly lubricates all of the moving parts and prevents middle to middle contact and stuff like that so another prime example of how dangerous ignorance can be feed your mind knows absolutely nothing about where oil is found yet he assumes that it must lubricate the furnace of the earth because evil scientists no, oil is not found lubricating metal contacts beneath the surface. This argument is really dumb. And so scientists have discovered a ring of fire, which is an active ring of volcanoes that encircles the Pacific Ocean. And so volcanoes form when magma... Good job! ...works its way up to the surface of the Earth and creates these mountain-like structures that we consider to be volcanoes. And so this pattern that scientists have discovered and this ring of fire appears to map out a tectonic plate. So scientists say these plate tectonics usually move about 
So scientists say these plate tectonics usually move up these plate tectonic plate tectonic plate tectonic plate tectonics. And so scientists say these plate tectonics usually move about two centimeters per year. Some have suggested up to two inches per year. The Gulf of California is said to be separating like a zipper. And mountains like the Himalaya Mountains and Mount Everest are said to be growing like an inch per year. And they're saying these mountains are all formed and growing due to the shifting of the tectonic plates which pushes the land up together and the pressure buildup can form these mountains. And so apparently these mountains are evidence of tectonic plate shifting. That is correct. And so does that mean that the Grand Canyon could be a place where the tectonic plates were separating, causing this massive valley? Again, feed your mind and presses with his lack of understanding about the topic. The Grand Canyon was formed by the Colorado River, not continental drift. When Alfred Wegener first suggested this theory of continental shifting and tectonic plates, the scientist community vehemently dismissed Alfred's findings. Plate tectonics had many issues when it was first proposed. Leading among them was the lack of a mechanism. Scientists of his day were right to be skeptical, as Wegener's proposal lacked merit beyond other competing hypotheses to explain the formation of the Earth. Now when the scientist community finally admitted that plate tectonics exist, I couldn't find an exact date, but it did say somewhere around late 50s, early 60s, which is exactly the time NASA was invented. Paleomagnetism played a key role in providing evidence for plate tectonic theory and that was not pioneered until the 1950s. Wegener's theories gained acceptance not long after that. There was zero connection between plate tectonics and NASA. Just because something happened in the late 50s, early 60s does not mean it supports your batshit crazy conspiracy theories. And so Alfred Wegener didn't get the credit he deserved. Bullshit Wegener didn't get the credit he deserves. The man has a looter crater, a Martian crater, an asteroid, a research institute, and many science awards named after him. The peninsula on Greenland, where he died, that's even named after him. In fact, he actually suspiciously disappeared on one of his journeys to prove his theory. And he took a team up to the North Pole in order to prove his theory about Pangea. And when he took his team up there, it is said that they set up camp, and when he left the camp to find food for his team, he never returned back. And they never found his body. And so he basically disappeared. Nobody ever heard from him again. Feed your mind is such a load of shit. Wegener did not travel to the North Pole to prove his theory about Pangea. He did it to help set up a mid-ice camp with rations. Wegener's burial site is known. There is even a fucking picture of it. His death is not suspicious. He was a 50 year old man traveling by dog sled in negative 60 degrees Celsius weather. Wegener was a great man and gave his life for science. That same science you love to shit on for your precious YouTube views. The thing that strikes me about this theory is that the Bible speaks of a time when the Tower of Babel was being formed in order to reach the heavens, the creator had to step in and confuse the languages. And so could have that been the time when he also separated the continents and had them all drift apart. If your Tower of Babel theory is correct, how do you explain the 10 other supercontinents that have appeared in Earth's past? Did God strike down 10 other Towers of Babel before finally writing the Pangea smoting down? And so in the last days, are these tectonic plates going to separate again and expose the lake of fire beneath the earth, which we consider lava? And maybe the remaining people on the earth are going to fall into the lake of fire, literally falling through the cracks of the earth into the depths of the lake of fire. Given how rare zones of tectonic activity are, I'd say a lot of people are really fucking safe from falling through the cracks at the end of the world. According to my research that this lake of fire would have to be underneath the earth where all the lava is coming from. And so could lava be a reminder to us on the surface of the earth? Is lava actually evidence of this lake of fire? It sure would fit the description, wouldn't it? No, no, mm -mm. Mm -mm. no, 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 no. Hell no! No! 
No! I refuse. No! 